An overlooked kid from small town Nebraska turned a 75% scholarship at SDSU into a career in the National Football League. Lynn Bodine was known as Bobo by his friends and teammates, but opponents more often said no mo after feeling the intensity on the other end of one brutal block after another. An All-American in 1974, Bodine was chosen by the Detroit Lions in the opening round of the 1975 draft. In fact, he is the only player in the rich and storied history of the North Central Conference to be chosen in the first round. An offensive tackle with the Jacks, he made the switch to guard as a pro, and Bodine made 49 starts over his five seasons in the NFL, playing four years in Detroit before finishing up with the Chicago Bears. Lynn Bodine, congratulations on being one of the newest members of the Jackrabbit Sports Hall of Fame. When I say those words, how does it feel? Feels pretty good. It's, uh, I guess, as everybody says, it's been a long time coming, but uh, it uh, really feels to be an honor. I'm glad the uh, committee, committee uh, picked me as far as Hall of Famer and the great group of athletes that have uh, gone through South Coast State, and I'm proud to be part of them. I always love to hear the stories about how you found out. And so where were you and what were the thoughts when Justin calls you to relay the word that you're going into the hall? Well, there's a little bit of a background to it. Uh, to be quite honest, I was expecting to be nominated uh, a few years prior to this, but uh, I did a little research and it looked like one of the requirements was to be a graduate of South Dakota State, which I wasn't a, officially was. I was, I knew I was close. Uh, and uh, Bert Pollock, she's the CEO, commander of the reunions for the 70s guys, uh, come up to me and said, you know, we need to get you in the Hall of Fame. And I said, well, Burj, I don't think I can because I don't have a, a degree. I didn't graduate. I says, well, you know, they've, they've lowered the uh, amount of credits that you need, but get your transcripts and let's see what we can do. So lo and behold, I uh, finally got my transcripts and I think there's like 132 credit hours on it and I needed 120. And uh, with the help of Professor Tracy Nelson in the hyper department, uh, she took the ball and uh, I guess scored for me. And uh, all of a sudden uh, I got my diploma in May. I'm part of the class of 2020. Okay, I gotta ask, who was the first person you told? Uh, um, I was at work at the time. So, uh, you know, those guys, and then, you know, I texted my family. Modern communication. <laughs> no, that, that's so awesome, Lynn. I want to go back in time a little bit. I want to talk about your time as a Jackrabbit. For starters, what led you to SDSU? Why did you choose to be a Jackrabbit? Well, that's a very good question. Um, i from a small town in Nebraska, Osceola. Um, I got injured my senior year, just a small hand injury, so I didn't play much. So I didn't get that much notoriety. Vanny was a coach in Nebraska. He didn't do a whole lot of in-state recruiting. He was basically taking everybody from all, you know, blue chippers from across the country and in Nebraska, which I didn't qualify for that at the time. But a, a grad assistant that was just hired there, uh, named Jim Woods, uh, <clears throat> went and started recruiting in Nebraska and found me in an earlier film that had to look me up on a roster. And uh, they gave me a pretty good scholarship. And... Uh, you know, it, it, it all worked out. Diesel, John Gregory, the head coach, and the rest of that staff, uh, were, was one of them or was somebody else? Who was the biggest factor in making you the, the All-American and, and the eventual professional football player you were while you were at South Dakota State? Well, I mentioned Jim Woods. He was, he was my offensive line coach for a, a year. He did a heck of a job. Then Wayne Hensel took after him and uh, – it was, you know, a combination of everything. I just felt I, you know, played hard and, you know, tried to reach my goals. At what point during your career at SDSU did you realize that the NFL was a legitimate possibility? Well, actually, it was my sophomore year. Uh, a fellow came in, a, a scout, and uh, mentioned that, you know, I had the potential to play in the NFL, and I, I thought he was full of BS. And, and I can't remember, I, I mentioned a, a player from Nebraska. He said, he, he, he doesn't hold a candle to you. 
So, uh, you know, I thought, well, maybe there is a shot. So I just kept working a little harder, and, uh, you know, again, things worked out. Draft day. This isn't what it is now, where it's on national TV and, and you know, and you got all these things. Uh, how did you find out you were a first-round draft pick? <laughs> That's funny. Uh, I think I was in bed, uh, my little apartment there in Brookings, and uh, I think they called about 9 o'clock and, uh, you know, answered the phone, and uh, here's Rick Frizzano asking me if I want to be a Detroit Lion. And, then he put me over to Russ Thomas, the general manager, and, uh, and then the party began. <laughs> I know it's hard to encapsulate all these things in a question or two, but what do you remember about your time in the National Football League? Well, there's ups and downs, just like anything. I mean, it, it was a good experience. It was uh, uh, fun to play with guys that you used to watch on TV and play against the best, and uh, uh, it, was, it was a lot of fun, but it was hard. There's injuries. It's it's hard work. The harder you work, the more you get out of it. Here you are. You've got this set up here. You've got to tell me about what's behind you. Okay. Um, well, right now I'm sitting at the uh, VIP lounge, 90th and Arbor in uh, Omaha. Mel Bull, the proprietor, which uh, bought this place about 15 years ago from uh, Scrap Iron. I'm sure you know Scrap Iron. I've heard of it. It was kind of a, a men's only type bar and uh, – a lot of Leroy Neiman and, you know, manly type stuff in here. So Mel kind of wanted to put his own style to it. So he asked uh, me if I had a jersey that we could put up on the wall. And I talked to a friend of mine, Lenny Woods, that uh, played football at South Coast State and unfortunately passed away kidney cancer about a year ago. Uh, we thought the college all-star jersey that I had, which was a, a game that I'll never forget. I was, I think that was the second to the last game is when the uh, best college players, the college all-stars played the uh, Super Bowl champions, which at that time was the Pittsburgh Steelers and probably more half their team's Hall of Fame. You know, Terry Bradshaw, being Joe Green, you know, the, the whole crew. And anyway, so we put the jersey up there. A fellow named Rod Black put this all together. Uh, a jersey, had a program, had the – roster from the Steelers and the college all-stars so it, it turned out really nice and uh, plus one thing I need to show you is uh, one out of one bobblehead of myself here and I'm also sharing this space with uh, Doug McDermott which uh, was an All-American at Creighton for three years now playing pros it's a Omaha kid. We've discussed a little bit about the alumni and whatever coming back to SDSU, being involved, uh, staying in contact to some extent with the program, why is that important to you? Well, again, you know, play with a, a lot of great players, and uh, I would like – I got a little deal here. I, I just want to mention, if you can see that, I probably played – I'm honored to play with, uh, with two of the best running backs that have ever played. This one's uh, number 34, Walter Payton. The other one would be uh, number 32, Les Tuma. Late Les Tuma, which I give my sympathies to Cherry and the family and a, and a recent Hall of Famer. But, uh, he, he was a heck of a running back, and I put him in the class of uh, Walter Payton, which was unbelievable. Where does the name Bobo come from? Bobo? Well, that's kind of a nickname. I mean, they were call, always – was called Bo, and then somebody came up with Bobo, so I, I just kind of stuck with it. I like, rather than Lynn or Glenn, or, you know, I get women's hygiene in the mail, so <laughs> Bobo uh, works pretty good. Of your time at SDSU, what are you proudest of? The proudest of? Mm -hmm. Oh, just the camaraderie, the guys that I've met, you know, the, the class of guys that and actually, I, I'm very proud of uh, finally getting my diploma. My mother, bless her heart, rest in peace, would be very proud of me right now. But uh, no, it was it was a great experience, and it's always good to go back and, and uh, see all the guys and, and what's been going on there. Well, Lynn, I mean this uh, in all sincerity. Uh, delighted uh, to to finally uh, get you in the Hall of Fame and to welcome you into this class. Uh, congratulations from all of us at SDSU Athletics.